As you've seen from the title, today in this video we're going to talk about serial acquirers. So actually, if we move on to Stratosphere, we can see that among the watch list that we have in the dashboards, there's one that is called Serial Acquires, where you can find some companies like Constellation Software. Then we can scroll a little bit more down. We have Carry Group. Then we have Hexagon, AB, we have Cognitz Corporation, and so forth. There are actually many. There's also this Nibe in Sweden that we're going to talk about, AdLife, Diploma, and so forth. From my understanding, and then actually I'm going to ask Guy, these serial acquirers are just companies that plan on buying other companies. So we can think about them as a sort of a Berkshire Hathaway, maybe a mini version of Berkshire Hathaway. But then these are also serial acquirers that can grow a lot over time. And we would see some of them have actually very specific targets on year over year growth. And so Guy, why are we interested in them? Like, are we interested in them because we want to own some shares or can they also serve as inspiration because they're also investors, right? And so they have some goals like the ones that we have. And so maybe we can actually learn from them as we did, in fact, learn, I guess, from Warren Buffett. A lot. So the interest in serial acquirers comes from the fact that they are essentially capital allocators. So we could look at them as just having a portfolio of businesses. Some of them are focused on some sectors. So actually, rather than a mini Berkshire, they are like a focused version of Berkshire or they buy and hold and actually help growing companies in specific sectors. One of the good aspects of the serial acquirers is that typically they have the successful ones, they have a process and they have a management that has done that for many, many years. Sometimes, actually, some of these serial acquirers are spin-offs of other serial acquirers, and they continue with this process of buying very, sometimes small companies that you wouldn't have access to because maybe they are located in very specific geographies and they, of course, they are not public companies. They are private companies and they are relatively small and unknown to investors like us. So they can tap into some part of the market that wouldn't be accessible, essentially. They have a very good process and continue to deliver year after year. So, for example, in the case of Nibe, this is a serial acquirer in Sweden, the performance of the stock price has been outstanding, so more than 20% over many, many years. Among the most famous ones, there is Constellation Software in Canada. They acquire software companies and they have this very decentralized, distributed approach. And in Sweden, there are some others that are quite famous in this field, let's say. So Lifco is one of them, Lagerkrantz is another one. Some of them have been so successful that they have become very big. And so we know that actually when a capital allocator becomes very, very big, it's more and more difficult to continue delivering outstanding results, right? Because when you become a company with tens of billions or hundreds of billions of dollars in market cap, probably you have uh, revenues that are many, many billions and it, it becomes more difficult to find what Warren Buffett refers to as the elephants, right? But some others are actually relatively small. So we are very interested in those serial acquirers because they have a very, very long runway, even though, of course, the management may be less well-known. And so there may be more uncertainties because they delivered results for a number of years that is less than, let's say, Constellation Software. Some companies can be regarded actually as serial acquirers, even though at first glance, they may not be regarded as such. For example, LVMH is the French luxury company, probably the most famous luxury company in the world. They have many different brands. So LVMH stands for Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. But these are just some of the brands that they have. Some of their brands are extremely well known. So for example, Dom Perignon, a stake in Dior, Fendi, Sephora, Tiffany, Bulgari, and so on. Another one, of course, is Berkshire. Berkshire is not even sectorial. Differently from LVMH, which is focused on luxury, Berkshire is a conglomerate. 
and it's just the genius of Warren Buffett that allowed them to be successful in many different sectors. But again, here with these two examples, Berkshire and LVMH, even Constellation Software is another one that is focused on software. These are extremely big companies. So the problem of how much runway, how much longer can they grow at very, very fast rate, much faster than the market, is very open. In the case of Berkshire, one could see clearly on the chart that up until the late 90s, the growth rate was one, and then now it has been lower. But of course, because now Berkshire is a huge company. Our focus is to find relatively smaller serial acquirers, and some of them have financial targets in their annual report. So for example, if we look at NIDE, in their annual report, they claim or they state their financial targets long term. We can see that they want to have, over the long run, a 20% growth. So revenue growth, 20%, they say half organic, half acquired, operating margin at least 10% that they successfully achieved in the past few years, differently from the revenue growth that is more volatile. And then they also say return on equity, 20%. They didn't achieve this once, but they're pretty close. And equity to asset ratios, at least 30%. So another way to look at this is that the capital structure shouldn't have too much debt. So these are numbers that are very compelling. So 20% growth is extremely high. A focus on the margin just tells us that they want to be profitable and they look at profitability as one important metric. So it's not you know, an unprofitable tech company or very small you know, venture whose cash flows, whose positive cash flows will come 10, 20 years down the road. No, actually this is a profitable company today that is growing. So we like this a lot. Return on equity, 20%. Also, this is a focus on how well the equity in this case is used. And then a focus on equity on asset ratio, 30%, means that they are not going to grow by taking on a lot of debt. That is typically very concerning when companies take on a huge amount of debt to buy another company. But this is not the case and they don't want to do that. And we see that actually their average is 50%. So now these are important metrics and we like them in general. Of course, we like the transparency and also the commitment to, to these goals. This doesn't mean that uh, this is a buy, right? Because we didn't look at the price, we didn't analyze the stock in detail. But as a concept, so not in particular needed, but as a concept, the serial acquirer is probably something that we will spend more time on and uh, we will analyze some of them. And probably, who knows, maybe some of them will uh, be part of the Gaia Map portfolio. Great, Guy. Yes, this is a new category, at least of companies to look at. I think it's something that, as you said, we already had under our nose, like Louis Vuitton, Berkshire, Constellation Software. But it's also good to know that there are smaller versions of them and newer versions of them that are maybe more useful for investors of today that maybe want to enjoy the next 20, 30 years of compounding of these companies. And of course, as you said, each company has its own risk. So it doesn't mean that you put all your money, for example, just in eBay. I think the same concepts of investing in stocks always apply, but it's definitely a class of companies that probably for us and for the Gaia Mat portfolio is worth looking at. So we're going to keep an eye on them and have some videos on, on them and maybe valuation about them. Thanks for watching this video until the end, compounders. If you like the video, you can consider giving us a like and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you're interested to some of these serial acquirers, and maybe you know some that we didn't show in the watch list, of course, please feel free to drop it in the comment section down below. And we're going to see you on Friday. Bye bye.